We've reached that time of year again. It's the Olivier season. This year, we saw a surprising number of nominees from non-West End houses, with most of our nominees already having finished their runs by this year's awards. With so many incredible shows nominated this year that you may have missed, I am back with my yearly tradition. With format lovingly stolen from Musical Theatre Mash's Tony Awards series, this is your guide to the 2023 Olivier Awards. Now, let's start with our new musicals. Three mornings, decades apart. A castle built of streets in the sky. As the dawn breaks. A self described love letter to Sheffield, Standing at Sky's Edge, features the music of singer songwriter Richard Hawley. The musical explores the stories of three different times in modern history, all set in the same Sheffield estate. A tale about community. This new British musical has picked up eight nominations this year, the most out of all of the musicals, and is the second most nominated show of the season. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this homegrown musical doesn't win big this year. Standing at Sky's Edge's eight nominations include Best Theatre Choreographer, Best Sound Design, Best Score Orchestrations, and Best New Musical. After sweeping the Tony Awards, winning 10 out of the 11 categories it was nominated in, the band's visit premiered at the Off West End's Don Mar Warehouse last summer. The band's visit, based off the film of the same name, is about a group of musicians who end up in the wrong town in Israel. That plot description may sound simple. That's because it is simple, but its humanity and the beauty of the score carries such a strong impact that has resulted in six nominations, including Best Score Orchestrations, several acting nods for the cast, and Best New Musical. God bless Tammy Faye. For years, people have talked about turning the life of Tammy Faye Baker into a musical, and this year we finally saw it happen at the Off West End's Almeida Theatre. Are you seeing a trend yet? With music and lyrics by Elton John and Jake Shears respectively, Tammy Faye follows, you guessed it, Tammy Faye, a famous televangelist who helped run the PTL network alongside her husband, Jim Baker. This musical explores their TV show together, the controversies surrounding her positive treatment of gay people during the AIDS crisis, and the less favorable business practices of her husband, and the founding of their Christian theme park. This musical is high camp, and yet dives into a lot of the complexities of Faye's life. Tammy Faye has picked up four nominations, three of those being nods for its cast members, Katie Brabham, Andrew Rannells, and Zubin Vala. And, of course, it's been nominated for Best New Musical. Cause today is the day we march. Let's go! Sylvia returned to the Old Vic this year with a rework and a fresh coat of paint, which has proved this musical's potential and has won over audiences and critics alike. A musical in a similar vein to Hamilton, Sylvia explores the suffragette story from the perspective of Emmeline Pankhurst's daughter, Sylvia. It explores the pair's rocky relationship through their movement for their right to vote. Sylvia may have suffered slightly in nominations due to the fact that it opened very close to the cutoff date this year, however it still picked up three nods for Best Theatre Choreographer, Best Actress in a Supporting Role in a Musical for Beverly Knight, and Best New Musical. Now, those are all our nominees for Best New Musical this year. However, we have two more musicals that we can mention. After years of waiting, we finally received a London production of Newsies, and to say it was worth the wait would be an understatement. The story of the nudes boys' strikes for better conditions and better pay is a tale that still feels sadly relevant to this day. Despite this, Newsies has only picked up one nomination for Best Theatre Choreographer, but let's be honest, if they weren't nominated for that, I feel like there wouldn't just be strikes at the Olivier Awards, there would be riots. When I was a kid, I was that gay that put on a Disney parade in my hall for my grandma. 
I had such high hopes, but unfortunately, it went hideously wrong. Okay, yes, I should probably put this one in the play section, and so I'm kind of counting it as an in-between show, because it doesn't really fit into either one of these categories amazingly well, but come on, this is a musical! And also, if I do this, there's one West End musical that we get to talk about, and then we get to talk about trans excellence as well, so it's a win-win. Robin Madge's autobiographical one-person show has grown and grown, from humble beginnings to multiple West End runs, as they tell you exactly how to put on your own Disney parade in your living room. This show is utterly beautiful, heartwarming, and so deeply moving. I am so glad it's been nominated. My Son's a Queer, But What Can You Do is up for one award this season. Best Entertainment or Comedy Play. Now, disregarding Rob Madge, because technically it's not a musical and it's an entertainment it's it's a weird in between but we love weird in betweens i'm a weird in between if you somehow didn't notice from all of our main nominees every single new musical this year that found itself with olivier nomination came from off west end venues in london simply put we didn't really have that many new musicals head into the west end this year Bonnie and Clyde is really the only exception, and as we've seen, that was completely snubbed this year. The mixture of lack of West End space, the hesitancy of Broadway producers to bring over new transfers due to their still recovering state of West End theatre, and the fact that we don't really produce that many new musicals straight to the West End, has seen a smaller number of new musicals open in the West End leading to a season of new musicals from these off West End venues. However, you're going to see that this trend even continues into our musical revivals. Oh, what a beautifully bold revival. This Broadway transfer premiered at the Young Vic last year and opened its West End transfer on the day it received its Olivier nominations. The classic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical has been completely reimagined and reinvented in this brave and intimate revival as we see Cowboy Curly and Farmer Judd fight for the affection of farm girl Laurie Williams. Another highly nominated show, despite a clear snub in the Best Direction category, Oklahoma is up for seven awards this year, including Best Sound Design, Best Acting Nod for four cast members, including Lead Actor and Doctor Who alum Arthur Darville, and Best Musical Revival. After struggling to make this run a reality with the pandemic, Sister Act returned to a London stage this summer ahead of a large UK tour. Sister Act, based on the Whoopi Goldberg film of the same name, follows club singer Dolores, who finds herself in witness protection, having to pretend to be a nun to save her from a mobster ex-boyfriend. It is a campy ride and a great musical retelling of the film, and honestly, its nominations this year did surprise me, especially seeing the rest of our more commercial pieces of theatre this year being left out. Sister Act is up for two awards, Best Supporting Actor for Clive Rowe and Best Musical Revival. Two Rodgers and Hammerstein revivals nominated in one season? South Pacific returned to London in, you guessed it, an off West End theatre last year, The Sadler's Wells. The revival of this love story set during World War II came directly from Chichester Festival Theatre before playing at Sadler's Wells on a UK tour. South Pacific is up for two awards this season, Best Actor in a Musical and Best Musical Revival. Rounding out this category, we have the closest thing to a West End show out of this entire season's musical nominees, and that is My Fair Lady at the London Coliseum, a venue that it's sometimes referred to as West End. It's literally in the heart of the West End, but is it West End? Who's to say? We don't have good rules on this. This Broadway transfer tells the classic tale of Professor Henry Higgins' bet to turn Cockney flower seller Eliza Doolittle into a woman suitable for high society. I am surprised to see this show here. I don't remember it being amazingly well received in London. Nonetheless, My Fair Lady is up for one award, Best Musical Revival. Moving on to our new plays. 
The Studio Ghibli film came to life at the Barbican this year as the magical My Neighbor Totoro wowed audiences and critics alike. A faithful retelling of the slice of life story of two young girls and their encounter with the mythical Totoro, this play has picked up an impressive nine nominations, the most out of any show this season, including nods for Best Theatre Choreographer for The Puppetry, Best Score Orchestrations, Best Actress for Mae Mac, and instead of being nominated for Best Play, it's been nominated in Best Entertainment or Comedy Play. The American classic made its way direct from Broadway last year. This play surrounds lawyer Atticus Finch as he tries to defend a black man who has been wrongly accused of a crime. Mockingbird is up for six awards this year, including several acting nods, Best Set Design, Best Director, and Best New Play. A play all about sexual assault and the justice system. This one woman play starring Killing Eve actress Jodie Comer was a smash hit in the West End. It picked up five nominations this year, one of them being a Best Actress nomination for Comer herself, but also Best Director and, of course, Best New Play. If I had a penny for every time a play about law was nominated for Best New Play in the 2023 Olivier Awards, I'd have two pennies. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Another show nominated from this year's Almeida season, Patriots follows Russian businessman and billionaire Boris Bukovsky and how his opposition to Putin led him from going from the Kremlin's inner circle to becoming a public enemy in Russia. This play has received two acting nominations and a nomination for Best New Play. For Black Boys Who Have Considered Suicide When The Hue Gets Too Heavy is an ensemble play with a West End transfer lined up for the end of this month. This Royal Court production follows six black men in group therapy. The play has received two nominations, a six-way nomination for Best Supporting Actor for all of the cast and Best New Play. Those are all our best new plays, now let's look at our play revivals. Look, if you can sell out your entire six week West End transfer in two hours and have your ticket prices set at about £300, you're clearly doing something right. Even though those ticket prices feel so, so wrong. This revival of Tennessee Williams Classic is one of this year's most anticipated shows, and this Almeida production, yes, yet again, Almeida, has picked up six nominations, including nods for Patsy Ferrin, Paul Mascow, and Ananja Vazan, and of course, Best Play Revival. Starring Doctor Who and Good Omen star David Tennant, the revival of Good, a play about a German professor who slowly justifies the actions of the Nazis during World War II, stunned audiences last year as it returned to the West End. This thought-provoking play has managed to get a nomination for all three of its cast members and, of course, a nomination for Best Revival, bringing its total to four. The devil is alive in Salem and we dare not quail to follow where the accusing finger points. The National Theatre's bold revival of this classic Arthur Miller play set during the Salem Witch Trials. This production wowed audiences from the second they walked in with that incredible rain curtain on stage. The Crucible is up for two awards this year, Best Revival and Best Lighting Design. Over a decade after it opened, Jez Butterworth's Jerusalem returned to its previous West End home at the Apollo Theatre for a short run last year. A dark comedy surrounding a man who is both the most and least popular man in town avoiding the authorities who want to evict him, Jerusalem's return snagged it a single nomination this year in the Best Revival category. And to end us off, let's speed run our plays that missed out on Best Play or Best Revival nods but still picked up a nomination or two. Blues for Alabama Sky picked up three nominations in Best Costume Design, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Actor. The Palladium Panto this year, Jack and the Beanstalk, picked up three nominations for Best Entertainment or Comedy Play, Best Costume Design, and Best Set Design. At Soho's Place production of As You Like It picked up a Best Supporting Actress nomination for Rose and Ellis. Several national theatre plays have been nominated for Best Acting categories this year, including The Corners Green for Best Actress, Jack Absolute Flies Again for Best Supporting Actress, and Phaedra for Best Actress as well. Finally, rounding us out for the awards this year is the transfer of One Woman Show, which has picked up a nomination in Best Entertainment or Comedy Play. And that is every single play or musical that has been nominated for the Olivier's this year. Look, I'm giving you something new with the plays. I'm not covering the operas and stuff. You gotta find someone else for that one. Because I equally don't know. This is a very interesting and different season. But I hope you are now feeling prepared for the Olivier Awards on Sunday the 3rd of April.
Who do you think is going to win? Who do you think was snubbed? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out. It helps out the channel. There's some links to my other videos on the screen right now and a link to my Instagram. You can also help support the channel by becoming a channel member, unlocking exclusive videos by hitting join down below. But that's it for me today and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.